Hi there, everyone. So this video is for anyone who's wanting or maybe just needing to buy a gift for a gardener um, and maybe is struggling to find ideas. So if it's a friend or a family member, or maybe you've got someone from work in the Secret Santa, um, this video is for you. So I've put together a list of practical gifts that you can choose from. I'm sure you'll find something. And I know that they're practical because um, I own them all. Um, so the things I'm gonna show you, mine are very old. I've had them for years. Um, they're very dirty, they're very battered, and that's because I use them all the time. So I've divided the list up into five. So I'll do clothing, I'll do personal items, I'll do um, small gardening tools and things for the greenhouse. Um, I'll do living things like plants. And then the final section will be the bigger um, sort of power tools, things like that, the more expensive gifts that maybe you're worrying about. Um, you know, oh, am I buying the right thing? So take from it what you will. I hope it helps you um, and don't stress about it. Gardeners are brilliant people to buy for. Oh, and one more thing before I start, um, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I'm not getting paid by anyone to advertise their goods. And um, there's no affiliate marketing. So, but you'll find the stuff that's, it's all over the place. So the first thing I'm going to start off with are gardening gloves. And I am not talking about the very pretty flowered cotton ones that you see that look ever so pretty. I'm talking about this type of glove here. Um, and the reason I like this one is because A, it's very fine. So you can do lots of things. The thicker gardening gloves I find, um, you know, you can't prick out seedlings or anything like that with them on. Um, but the main thing is they're waterproof. These have got a fully waterproof palm and then they've got waterproof fingertips on the other side. Um, and that's really good when we are gardening in January, February, March, when it's bitter cold outside. Um, if you have got cotton gloves on, they get wet straight away and freeze and your fingers go icy cold. Oh. Here's a pair of more sort of heavy duty ones. So again, that rubbery back. I always have um, lots of these gloves just in the drawer in the greenhouse. So these would be good for sort of lifting pots and things like that. But then um, I also wear, if you look back at my winter videos, I've always got fingerless gloves on. So here we are in my side conservatory and this is my little unit where I keep hats, gloves, scarves, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm talking about this type of fingerless glove. Nothing fancy, totally washable. Um, and the first time I used fingerless gloves in the garden, my daughter actually knit them for me, which is a brilliant idea if, um, you know, you want to knit something for your, your nana, your gran. Um, all she did was you measure round the person's hand like that or yours if you want it to be a surprise. So mine measures, what's that, seven inches across there. And then she measured from there part way up my fingers, so say six inches there. So you, you knit a square of seven by six, and then you fold it in half, stitch it up, and leave a hole where the thumb would go through. And that's what you get. So they are brilliant. And as with most of the gift ideas that I'm talking about, um, you can get them very reasonable or you can pay a fortune for them and you can actually get sort of waterproof fingerless gloves. But the beauty about fingerless gloves for the gardener is that it keeps you nice and warm, but your fingers are free to do really tiny, intricate things like planting seeds or um, cutting things back. And to maybe to go with the gloves, you might think, oh, I'll get them a lovely hat. Um, so I've got about 15 hats in this box, all of them mine, and I probably use two of them. 
Um, so you might be thinking, oh, I'll get them a lovely bobble hat like that. Very pretty. It's fleece lined, nice and warm, but I never wear this in the garden because of the bobble, because it's not practical. So if I'm in a border, um, cutting shrubs back or anything like that, or in, um, in amongst the trees, the lilac trees, I come out the border, the pom-pom sticks in the tree and the hat comes off. So I prefer hats like this one, like this is fleece, um, really, really fine, doesn't wear anything and it sits, let's have a look, there, it's nice and neat to the head. So it keeps me warm, but it's very light um, and again, washable because I will have that off and on numerous times throughout the day. And every time I pull it off, I've got dirty hands and the hat gets dirty. So you could get a hat to match the gloves. The next item of clothing, which I think would make a lovely gift would be to buy your gardener, male or female, a gilet. Um, or body warmer, whatever you want to call it. Um, and one tip I would give most gardeners I know like lots of fine layers rather than like a really bulky heavy one. I have got a bulky heavy gilet, but I don't wear it. I wear the finer ones. And that is because when it starts to rain, you can just slip your waterproof coat over the top and zip it up and you don't have to take that lovely warm gilet off. The other thing to think about with the gilet is the colour. I would say get a gilet in a block colour, this just all one colour. Um, and I tend to go for the sort of um, sludgy sort of earthy colours. So these khakis or um, this beige, this kind of thing. Um, and the good thing about that is the person you're buying it for will probably get more use out of it because it doesn't matter how flowery or stripy their jumper or blouse or anything is underneath it, the gilet won't clash with it. And you know, you could buy gloves and a hat to coordinate with the gilet if you wanted to um, get a bigger present. Another good idea if your gardener wears wellies um, is to buy a pair of welly socks. So you can get, these are my welly socks. So I've got a plain black pair um, and then I've got a pair with a pattern around the top. So again, your welly socks that you buy will be all bunny and new. Right, so what you do is you have your socks on already, nice warm woolly socks. You slip your foot into the welly sock and then you put it in your welly and then you put that over the top and it just adds an extra layer of insulation to your welly because they can get really cold. You can also get welly socks which um, they look about sort of that long and they're more like a knitted fabric like that and they go right up to your knee. Um, they're nice and warm as well but personally I would have both. Another idea would be to buy your gardener um, a nail brush, a new nail brush. This is a good size wooden one. I use it at least two or three times every day when I'm gardening because every time I come in for a cup of coffee or lunch, I have to scrub my nails clean um, and then what before I wash my hands. And that is just a little ceramic tea light holder, which I keep it in. Um, and that's really good because the nail brush is proud of the dish. So you've got to imagine my hands really covered in mud. I just lift it out, scrub my nails, put it back in. Um, and then I wash my hands, so a beautiful bar of soap for your gardener. Um, if it's female, you, you could buy her, you know, there's such beautifully packaged bars of soap now. You can get botanical ones, you can get Christmas smelling ones with sort of cinnamon in that. And then you could buy a nice little soap dish for it to sit on as well. Um, and if you wanted to really um, personalize it. So my soap dish matches the black in the wallpaper. 
and then after I've scrubbed my nails and washed my hands I always put hand cream on so you can get lovely hand creams in dispensers like this but at this time of year you can get beautiful botanical ones you you could get them out the same the hand cream from the same range that you got the soap from and then if you wanted to carry on in the same theme, obviously at the end of the day, we would have a nice shower or a nice warm bubble bath to warm up. So you could get bubble bath or shower gel in the same range. So that would be really special. If it's for a man, then um, I know for a fact at our chemist or your drugstore, you can get really sort of thick emollient hand creams for chapped hands with no perfume in. Another thing that um, I would really appreciate is um, either a chapstick or a lipstick. I never ever go out in the garden summer or winter without a lipstick on because I don't want my lips drying out. So you can get any kind of chapstick. Um, if you are a bit concerned about getting a lipstick, um, I would say just have a look at the lipstick that she's using at the moment. If it looks like that, just a stub, I mean, she loves it. She uses it all the time. And um, you could just take a photograph. It's usually, it's got the name on the end of the lipstick and you can go and buy that. Another thing you might not have considered is to buy, and I know they seem very, really old fashioned, but they're very, very practical. And that would be a tissue box. This one is too fancy for my greenhouse, but I do have one in the greenhouse um, with a box of tissues in because male or female in the winter months you'll get a runny nose or you're sneezing or your eyes are watering with the cold and you need a tissue but your hands are muddy or you've got your gardening gloves on you don't want to be going in pockets looking for packets of tissues so you can just whip a tissue out another thing that i use all the time is a notepad so my daughter bought me this so I think this is A5 size, but it's just ruled paper. I have over the years been bought gardening journals and some of them are quite huge and they've got loads of compartments to keep seeds in and everything. Um, and the truth is I don't use those type. Um, I keep this by my bed. I write all my thoughts for the garden in it. I write lists of plants in you could even go smaller and get pocket size because gardeners when we are say going out to a country estate in the summer um if you've got a pocket size notebook with you and a pen you can write down the names of the plants as you go around so it's you know nobody's going to cart a great big um a4 size garden journal with them so just a lovely little notebook that would make a lovely gift and as I say, you could put any number of these smaller gifts together in a hamper. I'll give you some ideas at the end of the video, um, and that would be a lovely present. Another good idea is to buy the gardener um, a little flask like that, a travel flask or a travel mug. You can see that they've got the handle on the side. So that would be lovely. And to go with that, I haven't actually got one of these, but I would love it for the greenhouse. So it would be um, a little airtight biscuit barrel with um, a packet of my favorite biscuits in. So that would be a lovely um, little gift. Um, just make sure that it is airtight. Maybe it's the ones that have the rubber seal round because obviously if they're leaving it in the greenhouse and the cold damp air gets in, your biscuits will go soggy um, and there's nothing worse. So yeah, maybe the ones that have got a rubber seal round, something like that, but that would be a lovely gift. See, I have the gloves on. So the next thing, um, the next section are small garden tools, things that I couldn't be without. So the first one um, is a pair of secateurs and you'll notice these have bright red handles. So if you're buying secateurs or snips or anything like that, buy them with brightly colored handles because us gardeners, when we're in the borders, um, we put things down um, and we immediately are distracted by what we're doing. And then when we leave the border, we can leave the secateurs or whatever lying in the soil. And if the handles are black or green, anything like that, 
they're very hard to see. Whereas if that catches our eye, then we immediately, oh, they're my secateurs. So I also have this, which is like a little holster and the secateurs go in that. And then that has a clip on it and that clips on your, um, your trouser belt. Um, and I have never lost my secateurs since I got this holster. So that is brilliant. Another thing you might um, think about getting are a pair of snips like that. Um, and these are really handy for doing like tiny little sort of intricate things like um, cutting um, deadheading clematis or something like that on your house plants. So they are secateurs and they are snips. Can you see the difference? And again, the blue handle, so I don't lose them. Um, and related to those small tools is this. My daughter bought me this bag. It must be getting on 20 years ago now. Oh, look, I've got a little ladybird on the handle. But you can see how well used that is. It's made out of canvas and I put all my gardening paraphernalia in that. And then when I'm down on my hands and knees, edging along borders or weeding. Um, I just have everything in this bag and I just drag it along with me. Whereas if I didn't have that, I know for a fact, I would just be leaving things all along in my way on the lawn um, or worse, chucking them out by mistake. Um, related to um, the secateurs, you could buy your gardener a sharpening tool so my daughter's just bought me this one. Um, so you get your secateurs and, and it's for sharpening the blade. So um, I've seen um, sharpening stones and they're about £20. Um, I don't know how much this one was, but I don't think it was anywhere near that much. It was just a little gift. She saw it and thought of me. If you had bought someone the bag like that and you wanted to put a few things in it, um, I'll just check my mic's still working. Um, two pairs of scissors would be good. Uh, again, nice bright colours, a small pair and a large pair. I use my large scissors for actually going along and cutting the grass on the edge of my lawn. Um, and I use small ones for all sorts of things, um, particularly opening compost bags and things like that. So we always need just plain scissors as well. Another gift idea would be anything to do with propagation that is um, where we plant seeds and you wait for them to germinate. Um, so you can get windowsill propagators for the gardener who maybe hasn't got a greenhouse or hasn't got a conservatory or a porch. Um, so that would be a good idea. Another thing you could get your gardener um, are plant labels. They will be needing those very early in spring. And um, what you do is you get your plants into their little modules. You write the name of the plant on and then you stick it in the module tray. So um, they'll need lots of these. So if you buy them black labels, you would get them a, a white acrylic pen to write the name of the plant on. If you buy them white labels, you get a black marker. They will always be welcome. <laughs> Right, so we'll go into the garage now um, and I'll show you some of the larger tools that I use, which I couldn't do without. So this is my husband's side of the garage. You see how tidy and organized that is? And this is my side. And believe me, I've actually tidied that up. I'm a very messy gardener. And for that very reason, I bought this. Um, it's made out of plastic and it is a corner unit, even though I have mine at the, just at the side of the garage here, and it holds all of my gardening tools. Because before I had this, um, I would be gardening away, get really tired, and then I would just throw my tools into the garage somewhere, and then the next day I would be looking for them. So yes, it was cheap as anything. I think it was about £10 and um, I very rarely lose my tools now. So that came in a box. If you like your um, something that you can wrap up in a box, that came flat packed. Right, so try not to laugh at the next thing I'm going to show you, but my lovely neighbour bought me this last year. Um, 
and it's one of the fa my favorite all-time gardening things so it didn't look like that when he gave it to me it had um, instead of this piece of wood it had a sort of bottom shaped molded plastic seat um, which was slightly cushioned um, but then my husband sat on it and broke it um, and I was gutted so I just had this piece of wood in the garage and I thought you know it was the easiest thing to do I just screwed the piece of wood to the top um, and what you do is <laughs> so you sit on it like this and if I'm in the greenhouse, say I've got my compost bag here and I'm pricking out things and I need something from over there, you just do that. It's a bit like an office chair. Um, but I tend to use this most um, here at the top of the drive and this is where I wash my pots out. So I'll have all my dirty pots, my jug of water and my hose. And I'll just sit and wash my pots out. And then if I want something from over there, it's the same, it's just, it's so easy and I would imagine if you had sort of um, mobility problems and you maybe couldn't get down on your knees or something um, if you sat on that you could probably weed your borders like that I just think it's genius it's brilliant um, and I know I could go out and buy myself a new one quite easily but I love it because it was such a thoughtful gift wasn't it so the next category I want to talk about is buying a gardener um, a plant, either a plant or a shrub or a tree, or um, have you thought about this, buying them some seeds? So one of my favorite um, gifts I ever received was from my granddaughter when she was quite small um, and she bought me a few packets of seeds. Um, she'd been on the... Um, internet with her granda and they'd done some research and they found flowers that um, he knew I didn't have in the garden but were, which were very high in pollen which is very important to me so for instance one of the packets was Jerusalem sage so um, I planted them I think in the February March and um, that was years ago and they grow in my garden every year and they're so special because she bought them for me but if you're thinking of getting your gardener um, a plant it's best I think if you know the gardener or quite well or you know their garden quite well so for instance we have a friend who loves roses that was real no-brainer we just bought her a rose tree one year and she loved it if you're buying shrubs or trees I would say don't do that unless you've heard the gardener say oh I would love a such and such so for instance my daughter would love a mallow so I could buy her one of those for Christmas and I know she'd be delighted if you were wanting to buy a tree for someone then I wouldn't do that unless the gardener had told you they want a specific type of tree so for instance you have to take into account the size of their garden it's no good buying someone with a tiny garden an apple tree because it's going to take up most of their garden and it'll just grow far too big so um, I think definitely that is one a, a gift where you need to have a conversation with the gardener so um, now we are on the final section which is um, the sort of power tools and the bigger gardening items so this is my wheelbarrow it's years and years old and can you see I've got holes in it and it's very rusted so if I got a wheelbarrow for Christmas I would be delighted with that this is another um, garden item that I couldn't be without and these are my loppers you get loppers in all different sizes so these are really long handled ones um, you can get shorter handled ones um, the difference being that the longer the handle the more leverage you've got so the, these long handle loppers would cut a branch about that thick um, but if you've got someone who maybe just has say buddleias in their garden or anyway you've seen them struggling with secateurs to um, cut branches or stems that are far too thick for those secateurs you could get them smaller ones um, because these ones you really do have to be quite strong to sort of 
push them together and snap that branch whereas the smaller ones are much easier to handle so loppers would be a great present so now we'll move on to the bigger gardening items that you might be um, considering buying so obviously i can only tell you about the things that i have and use on a regular basis and that would be a lawnmower a garden hose and hedge trimmers so if you are a non-gardener thinking of buying a garden hose for a gardener then take into consideration the size of their garden because you buy hoses according to um, the length that they are so you'll see you'll have 20 meter hoses and 40 meter hoses so what i had to do was i had to get my hose from the back of the house that's where my outside tap is that's a good thing to check have they got an outside tap so from the back of my house, all the way down the side garden, out the front garden and on outside the boundary wall of my house to water my border there. So I needed um, a 50 metre hose, but I've just bought a garden hose for my daughter and she's got a much smaller garden and she would use her hose to wash the car on the front of her drive um, and do her back border. So um, I took a piece of string, this is what I did with mine, I took a ball of string um, and I put it from the tap and I measured it to the furthest point away that she would need that hose to extend to um, and uh, we bought her a 25 metre hose. So both hoses, hers and mine, come on a, a reel that you wind in with the handle and the difference between winding her hose in and my hose is amazing. Hers was just so easy, it whipped back up, job done. Uh, my hose, because it's 50 metres long, um, it's so heavy to wind back in. I need it, but it's so heavy to wind back in. Um, and what happens is a lot of the time I'm just too tired at the end of the day. I've done the gardening, I've watered what I need to water, and I think, oh, I'll put the hose away tomorrow. Um, and I don't, and it, lie, it can lie out there for a week. So don't be tempted. If you know someone's got a really small garden, don't be tempted to get them a big 50 meter hose just because it, it looks better value um they, it might actually put them off using it the next thing is lawnmowers um you might be worried about what type of lawnmower to get the gardener um so again it comes down to size of garden i have a tiny little thread of grass runs through my garden i don't have a big lawn so my lawnmower is quite light um take it out, whip through in 10 minutes. But if I had a great big lawn, you would need a lawnmower with um, a big capacity for collecting the grass. So always try it, well, I would always get one with a box on the back to collect the grass, saves a lot of work. But also you would need a, so for a really big lawn, you would need um, a lawnmower with a really good motor because uh, it's obviously going to do a lot more work than my lawnmower would. And what I would say is just be guided by the reviews, you know, within reason. If your gardener has lots of hedges, um, or any hedges really, and you're thinking, mm, I'll get them a hedge trimmer, um, I have two. Up until last year, I only had one, and that was a plug-in handheld warm with a really strong motor because I have undulating hedges all the way around my garden and then I have two massive hedges up the side. So I'll show you if you can see the hedges there and you can see how high they are. So what I used to do is up until last year I would have an A-frame ladder and I would be balanced on the top with my electric hedge trimmer trying to do that on the top of the hedge. So last year um, I was bought as a gift um, an extending hedge trimmer um, and the top is you can angle it to any angle but you can angle it to 90 degrees so now all I do is I stand at the bottom of the hedge I don't need to climb up a ladder and I just go along the top with the top angled at 90 degrees and then I go around into my neighbour's garden and do it from the other side as well I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't mentioned. Um, when it comes to handheld large appliances, um, 
take into account the size of the gardener that you're buying for and their strength. Um, so these big electric appliances like hedge trimmers and that, um, they are heavy. You need a lot of upper body strength, um, core strength, arm strength. Um, so take that into account. Mine are both plug-in because I find those are lighter than the ones where you've got the battery on them. Um, so if you can and you're in the shop, pick it, pick whatever it is you're thinking of buying up and just stand in that shop for five, try and stand for five minutes holding it and I bet your arms ache and then try and think how long the gardener would have to hold that in the garden to trim a hedge. You're talking like half an hour. Um, the only downsides of getting the lighter ones is that they're not as powerful a motor as, as the heavier ones, but it's a trade-off. Just go by the reviews. Right, so now for the real fun part, um, and that is how ideas on how to present your gift. So um, I've just collected a few things together. Yours will be far prettier than this. So um, if you wanted a really practical way to um, present your gift, you could, if you were buying a lot of smaller items, you could buy a trug. This is a trug for any non-gardeners. It's plastic really light and we use these every day we usually put garden waste in or whatever so you could go to the pet shop and buy a bale of hay or straw um fill the trug yours will be nice and shiny and clean um fill it with straw and then put a few of um whatever it is you're buying in the top and that would be a lovely novel way to present a gift to a gardener or you could buy them a beautiful pot. So this is one of my favorites, really heavy ceramic, but I would do the same thing, fill it with straw and maybe put the toiletries in the top. You could do that. Or you could buy a plastic one like that, much lighter, fill that with straw, put your stuff in there, your little gardening tools or whatever. Um, so then I went in the garage and on my garage shelf I find, found these two hampers um, and what I use these hampers for is in the spring I fill them with hay spilling out and I usually have primroses and bulbs in them and I would stand them in my conservatory because um, I love them and they're not really weatherproof but you could buy these anywhere hampers um, fit again fill it with straw and put you know you could have your uh, biscuit tin and your flask and if, some gardening gloves and that and what a lovely way to present your gift there or you could just get a really small one put some stuff in that oh and I've got one more idea what about if you were buying a beautiful shiny wheelbarrow for your gardener fill that with straw and then lay a few little bits and pieces on the top um, you have to use your imagination on Christmas morning what that would look like I think that would be a really special present So there we go. Um, I really do hope that you found this video useful um, because I know a lot of non-gardeners in particular stress about buying gifts for gardeners um, because they're sort of in un unknown territory. Um, so I've tried to give practical gift suggestions with lots of different price points so that you can pick and choose. Um, so I would say try not to stress, enjoy the shopping process and have a lovely Christmas. Bye!